We finally made it to episode 100, and vegans are trying to ruin it. Welcome to the newest episode of SDW. Super Dario World! It's a me, Dario! Woohoo! Let's go! 100, dude. 100. It's crazy. Uh, it's a. Uh, crazy to think that just a few months ago i started this this little project and uh i feel like it's grown enough it's it's gotten steadily better i think i think i've gotten steadily better hopefully <laughs> hopefully you found it entertaining the numbers i think are solid from what i've well actually i i, I rarely check the numbers i don't care I, that was one of the things that i told myself once i started doing this uh don't look at the numbers because if the numbers are bad then y'all get disheartened and i won't do it if the numbers are good, I'll get cocky and I'll I'll think I can slow down. So, one of the four rules I, I put myself as like, don't do that. But I heard uh, via a third party that the numbers are solid. So, okay, that's that's something. I have an audience. People like me. Yay! They like me. They really like me. Yay! Now, I basically I've been guiding myself via uh, what people say. So, a lot of people reach out and they give me comments, they give me feedback, and so. That feedback has mostly been positive. I think I've only gotten positive stuff. So far, it's rare the negative thing. There one or two constructive criticism where uh, Eric and Hector and Dina, you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> kidding, those are my siblings. Anyway, uh, it doesn't matter. So, uh, so far, it's been going so good. I'm trying to think back back to how it all started. And I figured, you know what? I might as well give you a little, little insight because I have a lot of people that ask me, you know, they ask me, oh, how should I start my own podcast? How should I do all these things? But before I get into that, let me just give you a quick reminder that uh, you can find the podcast in the iHeartRadio app. Just type in the show present, Super Dire World, or you can find it on YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes as Super Dire World Podcast. Any comments, questions, or suggestions that you have for me, you can always find me at Dire of the Show on Instagram. This is a way for you to contact me. And okay, so advice, the things that I've learned, 100 episodes deep, what have I learned? Um, first off, you have to have pretty much, uh, a lot of time. <laughs> you need to, you need to have a lot of time to do it. Um, now, honestly, it's not really about a time thing cause you could bang this thing out in an hour. It all depends on how long you want to make it. I know the biggest thing that I've learned is if you want to start your own podcast, if you want to do something like this is you just kind of have to do it. There's never a perfect time to do it. It's kind of like having a kid. You just have to do it. And I'm not just saying just go have a kid. By the way, no, that's not what that's not what I'm saying. No, it's just to me because I plan. I was planning this out for a really long time. I was thinking like, oh, it could be like this. This could be the format. This could be the way that I try it. Uh, I could have maybe like a ho- co-host. Who would it be? What would be like our dynamic? What's the title of it? The title's super hard, by the way. Finding a good title is really hard. And so that way, I just kept procrastinating and procrastinating, and procrastinating. And then one day, I was, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna do it. And so I turned on the mic and I talked on the mic and I tried a format. After that, I just, I edited it out a lot because I sounded terrible. My first, talking to nobody is really hard. You know, it's a, you have to get into a certain state of mind. I I can talk somebody's ear off all day about stupid things. I don't care. I don't mind. I'm, I'm a talker. I can talk about stupid things all day. But there's something about when you're talking to a person, you get you get an energy from them. You get a vibe. You see their reactions. You kind of see where you're going. It also kind of helps keep you focused. You have to listen to what they say. There's a rapport. There's a bounce. There's a there's it's way just it's easier to talk to somebody else when you're talking like like a crazy person just to a mic. It, you kind of get lost. Honestly, I, I I it happens to me quite a lot. If you probably noticed that I get lost in what I'm saying and I forget. Honestly, because. There's nobody that I can feed back from. And so it it just, it was a matter of practice before I could actually feel like I was doing it right. I could do it without stopping. Uh, there was a point where I was doing it for over an hour nonstop, not even for a drink of water or anything, not, no pause. And I think it's uh, it's gotten better. I feel like it's gotten better. I still have pacing issues. Sometimes I just want to ramble on and just go into something and just can't stop because I really, really, really want to get it out before I forget what I'm saying. Like right there. So working on pacing is one of the most important things that I've had to work on. I'm still not there yet. I'm still, I get too excited. I'm excitable. I'm <laughs> I'm a child in many senses. I'm still like, I just want to ramble. I want to ramble. I want to go. And this is my podcast so I can do whatever the fuck I want. But no, uh, back to what I was saying, which is one, a prime example of getting lost in what you're saying. 
Uh, the best thing you could do is just turn on the mic, record yourself, and try. Try. You will most likely fail, right? You will most. I had a certain amount of experience on the mic already. Doing it this way was completely different. And eventually you realize, holy shit, this is a lot harder than it looks. So the best thing you can do is just do it. Record yourself. So what I did, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the best thing you can do, but I'll tell you what I did. So I recorded myself once. And uh, I edited it out. I put it a music. I put in music beds. I did a whole bunch of stuff. It took me hours to do it. It took me like four hours to do it, and it was terrible. It was really terrible, and I didn't even show it to anybody. Actually, I think no. The first thing I did was I made the open, and once I made the open, which I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of, by the way. That that open is really stupid, and I love it. <laughs> and uh, I showed it to some people, and they're like, "Okay, this is great." They gave me some constructive criticism, and I I modified it a little bit. And uh, all right, the, the open's done. So okay, I, I don't have that excuse anymore. Anymore. And then I, I made the logo. So okay, I don't I don't have that excuse anymore either. I, I I I'm doing all the busy work. I was doing I was procrastinating pretty much. Then I just turned on the mic and I tried it, and it took me four hours to edit it, and it was bad. And I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. And I could I myself I could see what was wrong with it. So next day, tried it again, edited it out again for a really long time. And that one I sent to uh, friends and family. I was just a couple of friends and a couple of family members. And I asked them for their constructive criticism. And I tried different things. Like, uh, I did three separate segments. One, I did just riffing off the top of my head. The other one, I was reading something. And the other one, I just had, like, bullet points. And so, one worked out a little bit better than the other. So, that's kind of what I kept going on with. Uh, Eventually... I modified it because you get a little... Again, I felt like I was getting more comfortable doing it a different way. So the way that I that I sounded better was with bullet points because it helps pull me back to what I'm talking about. And usually when I'm doing the Game of Thrones uh, rewrite, that's I, I go with bullet points so that I can always go back to whatever the fuck I was talking about and I don't get lost. Other things, like right now, I'm just going off the top of my head because yeah, you never know where you're going to end up. And yeah, this is this is part of it. This is episode 100. I can do whatever the fuck I want. I'm I'm in triple digits, baby, triple digits. Then uh, you got to be realistic. Uh, so so again, you you do it two three times. It's still gonna suck, but at that point, uh, I was like, all right, I have to I have to load the next one. I have to load the next one. I, by the way, by that point, I already had my accounts ready. I already had everything ready. So there was no excuse for me not to do it, other than I thought that it was gonna be crappy, but. I decided, you know what, fuck it. I'll, I'm going to load this one. And I had to because it was a Friday and that Monday and that, that Sunday was the first episode of Game of Thrones. So the very first segment, uh, the very first podcast episode, I talked about Game of Thrones. Like all these 100 episodes, I, I've talked a lot of Game of Thrones. A lot. And I complained about Game of Thrones. A lot. <laughs> so I felt, you know, I, I kind of have to start it here now. Like what, 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 what am I expecting from the new season? What am I expecting from all this stuff? And so I had to load it. I had to, and I did, and uh, I, looking back on it, it's still probably kind of crappy, still probably kind of crappy, but uh, it was out there, it was out there for the world to judge, and sometimes that's that's the hardest thing, uh, what are they going to say, what are they going to think, so I did it little by little, I dipped my toe with, first off, people who were close to me, and then I, I just threw it out there to the universe, to the world, to see what people th- thought, then Fortunately, a lot of my guesses and a lot of my theories and a lot of stuff for Game of Thrones landed and people agreed with my opinions and it just, it snowballed from there. People cared and uh, it, it's been going well so far. After Game of Thrones was done, it was like, all right, well, what do I want this thing to be? What do I want this to be? And so far, it's just been me talking about stuff, whatever I want. I can talk about whatever I want and I usually try to focus it on some kind of piece of news that I found funny or interesting or a list or whatever or, well, now... I also talked about movies that I watch, but now I'm doing reviews for a website called ReviewNation.net. And so my re- if I'm doing a review, I'll, I'm, I'm loading it there and I'm doing a video for YouTube. And so point is, it's gotten bigger. It also, it's expanded and I've gotten to do a lot more different things. I've gotten a lot of opportunities via it. But my main advice here is, one, do all the busy work first. Do it. And two, just turn on that mic and load it. Fuck it. It's going to suck, but do it. And then you do it the next day and the next day and you keep it keep it going. The key is consistency. Always consistency. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. 
practice, 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 practice. I still don't feel like I'm great at it. I feel like I'm barely, I'm I'm inching towards good, but I'm still at mediocre. It's hard sometimes because it's my, all right, it's hard sometimes, but it's mainly because I don't have the time to prep it as I'm, as much as I would like. Things that, fortunately, my role has expanded here on the morning show. They've asked me to do more things, and it takes up more of my time. So I haven't been able to do the pre-production that I would like to do. Like, I would love to do just four hours of pre-production and just talking for an hour, editing it and loading it. That would be great, but I don't have the time for it. So, unfortunately, it's it's... It's it's been a good and a bad thing. Good because it's forced me to just, you know, become more on an off the cuff person, you know, just shoot from the hip, which is how I enjoy doing things. Bad because uh, I don't feel like it's I've given the production value that I think I could. You know? Like I know what I could do if I had the time for it. I just don't have the time for it. And uh, I'm spread a little bit too thin with things. But again, it's good opportunities that I've gotten so I can't really complain there. So Double go going back to it one last time. Best thing you can do is just turn on that mic, record yourself, and load it up to the internet. Just take it. Take the criticism. Do not give a fuck. People will criticize you in good and in bad ways, but you put it out there. That the hardest part is putting it out there the first time. The very first time is the hardest. After that, it gets easier because you're no longer afraid, right? It's a. Uh, it's really weird. I think it's kind of like speaking in public. That you're terrified of speaking in public, you you're you're worried. You're uh, what, what's the Steven Seagal quote? Like, uh, damn it, I'm trying to remember it from the OC. I'm trying to remember a quote from the OC from Steven Seagal. Oh, the anticipation of death is far worse than death itself. And, <laughs> I I worked that one out. I worked that one out. Uh, yeah, and that is 100 percent true in this business, in the entertainment business. And th- it's weird because. Um, some of the people who, who've reached out, they'd be like, no, dude, it's me and my buddies. We want to do this. We want to do that. We think we're really funny when we riff together. That's, oh, that doesn't always work. <laughs> I've done, uh, before working for the radio station here, I worked for another radio station in Mexico. Doing it with your buddies is not always the best idea. It's, uh, even if you have great chemistry, you don't always have the same work ethic, ethic, and that can get really stressful really quickly. So, if, the, if it's a topic that they're an expert in or they really want to talk about, great. They'll be great. If it's something they don't really give a fuck about, then you'll be carrying somebody else. So you need to be very careful. Sometimes it's better to be to work somebody that you work well with than to some somebody that you have good chem- that you have good chemistry with. It's a, well, I guess both are equally important, especially in the entertainment business. But overall, it's I mean. I would pick somebody that I have go- good work chemistry with over good on-air chemistry with uh, from the get-go. Because you can work on one. You can work on having good chemistry on the air with somebody, right? It, it takes practice. It takes uh, time getting comfortable. It takes, you know, maybe to making them watch a few comedy specials or something for them to get, you know, an idea what you're going through or, or what you, what you want to go for. Practice, practice, practice. The... Chemistry in like worth ethic wise, you can't teach somebody good work ethic. You just can't. It's uh they have to learn it for themselves and they have to care enough. And sometimes people don't care enough, or they don't care as much as you do, which is equally bad. But I mean, maybe you care too much. So it's it's important for you to have good chemistry on both ends. But if I have to pick one, I'm going to have I'm going to always pick to work with somebody. Uh, who I have good work chemistry with, who who has the same work ethic as I do. Otherwise, we'd we'd be at each other's throats. It doesn't matter how good we are on the air. It's it's not gonna be a fun work day for me if I feel like I'm doing ninety percent of the work, and the other person is just taking like the glory, and there's just it's an it's a free ride for them. Or you can just do it by yourself, like I do. Um, uh, just talk to yourself to a mic. I feel like I'm I feel like sometimes I, I am actually reaching out to somebody and like, oh, this person learning something, you know? But you never know. Anyway, that's the that's the big thing. That's the big thing that I've learned from doing this podcast. Practice, 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 consistency, consistency, consistency. Every time. Especially cuz sometimes, you know, what happens is if you have a few episodes deep or, or this happens to me a lot. You know, when you're on YouTube and you find a video that you like and you're like, "Ah, oh, you know, I'll check out something else." So it doesn't matter if they don't see the video immediately. This is an Instagram, right? On Instagram if they if you don't get the likes immediately, you're pretty much screwed. They're, nobody's going to see it. 
But on YouTube, on on SoundCloud, on everything else, on the iHeartRadio app, sometimes people get, you know, into a groove. It's like, oh, I like this. I'll listen to another one. Oh, I'll listen to another. And one day they might listen through all your shit. I mean, probably not because it's just hours long, but they'll they'll get into a groove and they'll become a fan. And the, the, they can't become a fan if you don't keep putting stuff out there. You always got to put stuff out there all day, every day. Well, every day at least. Every day. Uh, and that, that was actually my, my, one of my things. Uh, a lot of people ask me, like, why don't you do like once a week thing or something? And I considered it. It would have been way easier, like an hour long podcast once a day. Been perfect, right? Super easy, clean, effective, nice. But uh, I decided against it because I knew I needed to practice. I knew I needed to practice. I needed the pressure. And uh, if I made it easy for myself, I knew that I probably was going to lax on it a little bit. And uh, so it's, it's about knowing yourself, knowing your limits. But anyway, that's what I've learned from the podcast world so far in 100 episodes. Hopefully, if you're looking to get into it, uh, that you'll find that interesting. Um, also, be nice to your fans. <laughs> Always be nice to your fans. I, I love when people reach out to me and have questions. Like yesterday, a uh, P1 called in, and he asked if I'd played the new the new Pokemon game that's on it's it's on the phone. It's called Pokemon Masters, and uh, he asked if I'd played it. And I told him no. And he's like, oh, okay, because I was, I was considering it, but I was waiting to see if you'd played it, just, you know, to see if I could save myself that. So it was pretty cool to hear somebody be like, hey, you know what? I care about your opinion. I care about your opinion so much that I wanted to wait and hear your review of it. Uh, so I downloaded the game. I wasn't planning on it, but I did download the game. This, this is all for you, buddy. Uh, I downloaded it, and I didn't love it. Uh, pretty much what the game consists of is you, instead of, getting pokemon you get trainers and it's a three-on-three battle that's timed so it's it's strategy but not really it's well it's not turn-based strategy so it, it was just not as fun it's not what i want from pokemon what i want from pokemon is i want to catch pokemon and i want to train pokemon for they so for them to evolve that is what i want that is what i want this one is still fun i guess it's just not as fun collecting trainers is and their pokemon is not as fun as catching your own pocket pokemon okay it's not as much fun so, I'll still give it a, a little bit. I mean, I'm only a few hours deep, and it's free. So I'll I'll give it another shot for a few more days. But I don't think I don't think it's gonna stay in my phone. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it, especially not because I mean, if I, I have other games on my phone and I have a Switch, so I can just play other games there. So anyway, uh, so moving on to the thing that uh, <laughs> the news that caught my eye today. So it's episode 100. What should I talk about? What 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 topic should be good enough? Should should I go for for the thing that started it all? Should I talk Game of Thrones? Nah, that's Mondays. That's that's when I do the rewrites. Should I talk DC, Marvel, Star Wars, something geeky, something something you know? So I go into a conspiracy theory, some of my crazy stuff. Nah, I'm gonna talk about something I hate: vegans. I hate vegans. Well, actually, that's hate's too strong of a word. I loathe them entirely. No, that's, uh, that's again, too far. I hate some vegans. Now, I need to clarify that. Now, if you are a vegan just because you don't like eating certain... You don't like the flavor... I, I understand a vegetarian that who doesn't like the flavor of meat. I get it. It's like, oh, you, you want some chicken or something? No, I don't like the taste. Fine. That's it. If you're a person who's trying to convert me into becoming a vegan or who thinks it's better than me because they're vegan and who's trying to force your veganism on me then I hate you. I hate you because you're so annoying. You're the worst. It's like a cult. I've always said being a vegan is like a cult. The worst. It's a, I'll, I'll never forget. I, I, like, for example, if you go to a steakhouse and you're a vegan, you can ask for a salad, correct? Right? It'd be weird for you to go to a steakhouse if you're a vegan, but let's say you go out with a friend and you go out to a steakhouse, you ask for a salad, they'll give you a salad. If you go to a vegan place and you ask for some chicken, they'll like cuss you out of the building, man. You're a monster. How dare you? How dare you ask for something here specially catered for you, meat eater? Whereas is the opposite has happened. I remember it was a story I think was in Ireland or Scotland that a restaurant sent out a message saying like, you know what? Fuck you vegans. We're not making anything for you anymore. And people went nuts like, Vegans were trying to boycott it left and right, and that actually brought in more business to that restaurant. Ha! 
Suck it. You see, the world does not have to cater for you. We don't. We don't. All right? If you don't like what they're serving, don't go there. Why are you trying to force businesses to bend their will towards you? You suck. Anyway, but there's there's been a lot of funny stuff in the news res- recently about vegans. And very recently, I mean a few months. I remember there was a very famous Instagram <laughs> Instagram influencer. She's a vegan. And uh, they caught her eating fish and, and basically imploded her career. Because uh, <laughs> she said that. Uh, she had to, afterwards in an apology, she had to say that, oh, yeah, well, I went to the doctor and the doctor said that I had to eat different types of proteins. Otherwise, I was going to die. And so everybody was like, so you're promoting, promoting a vegan lifestyle that was going to kill you? What the fuck? Blah, blah, blah. And so <laughs> it all imploded in her face. She lost everything in a day. It was hysterical. And that's what happens when you're fake. She could have just been honest from the beginning. Like, hey, you know what? I'm actually not a vegan. But no, she was trying to scam a whole bunch of dummies. And uh, it worked for a while. She made her bank for a while. Not anymore. Not anymore. Anyway, so this, today's episode 100, speaking news of the day. Let me just, uh, let me just tell you what happened. This happened down under. It was down in Australia. And uh, there was this vegan who sued Hanavis over smelly barbecues. All right? So you got this bird over here who's a vegan and she took her case all the way up to the Australian Supreme Court because she didn't like the smell from a neighbor's barbecue. It's bloody insane. Anyway, uh, long story short, that's what happened. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I like I liked the Australian accent. You know, uh, I once met an Australian girl who told me the trick to trying to do an Australian accent. Basically, if you have a one-syllable one word that ends in, with an R, you have to sound like a sheep. Like, for example, like B... You want to go to the bar? You want to go to the car? So, yeah, <laughs> that's the trick. According to her, that's the trick to sounding like an Australian. Anyway, so there was this chick in Australia who sued her neighbors and took it all the way to the Australian Supreme Court that <laughs> because her neighbors kept making barbecues uh, outside, well, in their house. So they were outside and they did a barbecue, which is usually where barbecues happen, and the smell got into her house and she said it was like ruin ruining her her life and made life uh very oh wait, wait, wait. destroyed her quality of life Bar- the neighbors barbecues destroyed her quality of life so she took it all the way up to the supreme court now she complained about other stuff like uh the kids the neighbors asshole kids playing basketball in the middle of the day how dare they how dare you children enjoy the outdoors. How dare you be inside, play video games. How dare you go outside and exercise. How do you have the energy for it? <laughs> How dare you with your non-vegan diet have energy for anything. I can barely stand. <laughs> anyway, so this bitch, <laughs> this bitch sued them and uh, she lost. Obviously, the, the court just pretty much threw out the case because her claims were unreasonable. Like, you can't tell. Listen, you entitled bitch. You cannot have the right to tell other people what to do in their own property if they're not breaking the law. Now, if they were outside cooking meth, then yeah, you have a right to say something. I'll, I'll give it to you. You have all the right in the world to say, you know what? Please stop it. That affects my quality of life. Because, you know, meth labs tend to explode. But they were cur- cooking food now. Smoke goes out in the air. You do not have to be outside. You don't. I mean, and and I I doubt that they're going to be cooking all fucking day. You know? I doubt it. So, what, one or two hours a day that you can't be outside? Oh, my God. Call Scotland Yard. How dare they? How dare... I know I went from British... uh, I went from Australian to British, but this is how I usually listen. I I imagine entitled a-hole sounding. Anyway, so... What happened here is karma is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So she complained. There's lawyers' fees. There's all this stuff. And so what happened is the community decided, you know what? We're going to make a gigantic-ass cookout right outside of our house. Right outside of our house. And so now more than 3,000 people are planning to attend (laughs) a cookout outside of her house. Uh, The Facebook page is called 
community barbecue for Chilla Garden. I think that's how you say it. Uh, it's C-I-L-L-A. It's not C, yeah, I think it's Chilla. Anyway, don't let Chilla destroy a good old Aussie tradition. Join us for a community barbecue. Um, I'll do this one in Australia. Don't let Chilla destroy a good old Aussie tradition. Join us for a community barbecue and help Chilla Garden keep some go get some pork on our fork. Ah. Uh, anyway, so this the barbecue schedule for October nineteenth, and vegans are not welcome. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is this is the perfect example of if you play stupid games, you win stupid prices. Now, the ideal solution here would be for her to not be at home that day. <laughs> Simple, right? All right. You brought this on yourself, lady. You you demanded your neighbors bend their will to yours. You know, they bend their lifestyle to everything just to make you happy, to make everything you, 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 well, it, it exploded right in your face. So now what you could do to fix this or save yourself from it, honestly, you should be a part of it, part of the community, try to make, you know, to fix all the community stuff. But the smart thing for you to do is just leave. Spend a day outside. Go somewhere else. You know, take a weekend off, you know, they, they go explore the country. But uh, what's most likely is going to happen is that she's going to stand her ground and it's going to become a whole big fight thing. You, I, I can guarantee you, you haven't heard of the last of this because vegans everywhere are going to get involved and it's going to become a mess. And all you have to do is not be a dick, right? All she had to do was not be a dick about it. I'm pretty sure that if she would have been nice about it and uh, not been unreasonable, Things would have been solved pretty easily. Like they might have moved the barbecue to another side of the property. They might have. I mean, I wouldn't have. Fuck vegans. Screw them. You can't tell me what to do. You can't tell me what to do. Honestly, not on my property. But I mean, I, I may well, I may have been a little bit nicer about it. You know, it all depends on the approach. It all depends on the approach. So far, her approach was shitty. I've seen the video of her talking. She looks like an entitled bitch, and I hate her. So, fuck you, lady. This is what you get. And uh, it's gotten blown up way, way out of proportion. And again, like I said, we have not heard the last of the story. I can guarantee you. It's dumb people like this have a habit of doubling down. They have a habit of doubling down, and I love it. I love it when somebody picks a stupid hill to die on. It's the best because they get massacred. Massacred because one side eats meat. (laughs) They have have no issue getting a little blood in their hands. None. Also, uh, there's the thing. Uh, what? What? Um, I think it was Louis C.K. who said it, or was it Dave Chappelle? It's like, how far or how much am I responsible for your feelings? Like, uh, where's the line? Like, there's a point where you're responsible for the way you feel, right? You, I, I think so. There, are, there should be a point where you're the one responsible for the way you feel. I might be a dick to you all day. I might call you a whole bunch of words all day. You're the one who chooses to be annoyed by it. And uh, usually if you're annoyed by something, it's because there's a bit of truth in it. Like, that, I think that's that's fair. I think that's a fair assessment. But also, you could have just closed your window. You could have walked out for, oh, you could have just not gone outside a little bit. You could have done something. You adapt. This is a person who refuses to adapt and wants the world to bend to her will. Because she's such a special and unique little butterfly and she's better than her neighbors for not eating meat. That's it, guys. Don't you know, guys? That's it. She's better than you. All right? She's better than you, and she deserves to be treated better than you. You are weaker. You're you're less you're less than her. So you should be doing what she says. Obviously. Duh. Anyway, uh so yeah. So vegans try to ruin my my episode one hundred, but <laughs> it blew up in their face and it's glorious. Anyway, that's it. That's it for today. Uh <laughs> Oh, sorry. I'm very happy when I hear that, that things go badly for stupid people. I just love it. I love it. Anyway, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you enjoyed these first 100s, uh, 100 episodes. Any comments, questions, or suggestions you have for me, as always, you can find me on Instagram at Dario the Show. I'm a little backed up on stuff. I haven't answered things for, for a bit. Uh, this week was not only busy, but I, I hadn't felt that well. So, But I'll answer. I always answer everything. It may take me a while, but I always answer everything. Uh, as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening all this time. For those of you who've been from day one, uh, I appreciate you sticking with me. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it so far. Hopefully, you you enjoy the, the things to come, you know, because uh, I want to try some, a few, you know, different things, something a little bit better. So, uh, 
So hopefully you enjoy the next 100, and uh, hope you have a great day.